if we're going to be looking at low solubility drugs, what is our objective? The objective is twofold as usual. We're looking at it from a quality control, <clears throat> quality assurance, which as I explained yesterday, really means reproducibility batch to batch. And, and that's relatively easy. Or for being a prediction of bioavailability. Um, how would one start to develop this? Well, first of all, check your results without surfactant. Your basic data, HCL, acetate, pH 4.5, phosphate 6.8, or phosphate 4.5, whatever, Establish the data. There is no wrong answer. As I said, the very first slide of today, there's no wrong answer. You will have information from this. Even if you're only getting 5% dissolution, it is a result and it is as relevant a result as 100% dissolution. And then the conventional approach is to evaluate the effect of different surfactants. And basically we have three classes, cationic, anionic, and non-ionic. So we're looking at things like sodium lauryl sulfate, uh, cetramide, acetyl trimethyl uh, ammonium, um, or non-ionic twin spans. Um, and you do this qualitatively and then quantitatively. And that's why as it said in the USP, you need to determine the concentration. Determine, uh, uh, pick your apparatus. Um, that to me is pretty straightforward. I always go to paddle. I always start at 900 milliliters for no good reason. 500 would probably be more logical. Um, rotation, uh, speed, again, the normal 50 RPM, unless you see that you've got cone effects, um, and then look for the surface, the appropriate surface active agent um, concentration. You do not want, as you saw with the results with griseofulvin, you don't want massive sink conditions. You want a condition, a level of surface active agent which is still discriminatory. If you put in 5% sodium lauryl sulfate, you will have 100% dissolution, but it's complete rubbish. And then you would start to look at setting your specifications.